So you guys put this song together. It gets accepted for your album. But does the album drop before he passes or no? Or does, does the song no, come out? No. The, the, so so here's the thing. is what, what, they, right. made, they, they, they basically, when, when he passed, two weeks after the song, he was killed. After we recorded the song, he was killed two weeks later. Right, in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. Yeah, we, we've done a lot so of coverage I, I, around I, I got to know Tupac, and then he was killed right away. It was like someone that you knew for a brief moment, you got to know him for a brief moment, have this moment that was extremely, you know, strong. So much was exchanged in that those three hours, and it was probably more than three hours. I'm just saying the amount of time that it took for us to get the bulk of the song done was three hours, right? It was mad time spent in the studio with, with Pac. I watched him record to live and die in LA, mm. you know, uh, he he sat there and watched me put down the vocoder parts for the background for girl it's all right and I remember I was you know we were drinking Hennessy and and you know everything was kind of you know real loose for a second I was messing up you know on the vocal vocal part you know vocoder part and uh, I was trying to get my Roger Troutman on you know and he was like all right man no more Hennessy for John like play that right man this ain't no joke play it this is a record right now play it right I was like. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and, uh, like you know, Tupac, you know, telling you to play it right, you're gonna play it right, you know. So that's the take you hear is me like, girl, <laughs> really try to be really right on it, you know what I mean? But I mean, he was he was a lovely dude, and he was like, man, at the end of the session, he was, man, just you leaving already, you know? And I was like, man, I gotta go. It's like four in the morning, you know, it's late. He's like, all right, man, love you, man. Don't waste your talent, man. Kill. Kill it out there, you know. Mm. It's, and I just remember him being like somebody that I knew I was gonna see again, and that all of a sudden now I had this ally that was like very powerful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I left with the world on my. You know, I was like, oh man, I felt like Superman. You know. I've interviewed a lot of people who who had worked with Tupac, mm -hmm. and a lot of them said that Tupac had this kind of urgency to get this music out. Yeah. You know, and a lot of them said that you know they felt like. He knew he wasn't going to live for a long time. And he had to get this music out as quickly as possible. He wrote his death before his death happened. He shot the video for I Ain't Mad At You a week before he got killed. Like, why would you do a video about you getting killed? And then a week later, you get killed. Why would you write songs about, you know, dear mama and being a loving son to your mama and... and all of these things kick into play now. Yeah, and there's a bullet coming at him on his last album cover, you know, the Machiavelli album and everything. It's... He knew it. He worked like a fucking racehorse. Like, the way I work now, I ain't half as what he is. Like, he you saying Bolt, and I'm like Carl Lewis. But this motherfucker, and I swear to God, this how this nigga used to work. We'd be in the studio, he'd, he'd make a song, it'd be like 30 niggas in here, he'd make a song, he let him get on the song, him get on the song, him get on the song. As soon as the song go off, he won't even listen to it. Put that shit over there. Pull the next beat up. He get on to the next beat. They writing some more shit. Boom, they finish that song. Then he say, I'm going to do one by myself. 20 minutes later, he and that motherfucker spitting it. There's three songs this nigga done did in an hour. Three songs, he ain't listened to now one of them. Then... He may go smoke and chill or whatever, drink, come back, pull another beat up. When he and this motherfucker, he and this motherfucker making music. Everybody in here making music. So it's like to me, why the fuck was he working so, so fast and so hard and trying to finish all these records up? He knew. He had to know. He had to hurry up and get all that music out. That's what I heard people say. He had, he had his shirt off in the session, and I could see the bullet holes, you know what I mean? The yeah. scars. And it's, a t it's intense when you see someone's bullet holes. It, it kind of puts it into perspective. It's not like tattoos. Yeah. It's like where the flesh is, you know what I mean? It's, it's like flares out like that, like in lines. And it's like pretty intense. And he had like six or something like that or whatever it was on his chest. So he had like slacks on with his shirt off and like dress shoes with the white 
the white dress shoes on, never forget. You know, he came with a Versace shirt on and he just would take it off during the <laughs> session, just be like, you know, and with the chains, and, you know, it's just Tupac, you know, exactly how you see. And he, I remember him, you know, he had this very tough uh, exterior, but once you sat down to get into the song, oh man, it wasn't nothing that he wouldn't, an emotion, it wasn't nothing that was left on, no stone unturned, you know what I mean? Like he would go to the, you know, to the very depths, the core of what you feel, what you feel, what, what, you know, what are you really trying to go? What are you trying to say right now? Before he would you know, just write the line down, you know? Um, I remember that about him. He's like, nah, don't, don't just sing it, man. Go back, go back. Really feel that one right there, you know? And some of the things that he said to me will stick with me for life, you know? I'll, I'll never forget it.